as affirmative. That's good. All right, excellent. Um, okay, everyone. So again, I was saying that we are uh, looking at a reading section in this class, and it will be um, reading about a conflict between Canada and the uh, U.S. All right. Uh, this lesson is presented to you by AEHelp.com. That's Academic IELTS Help .com. Uh, that website looks like this here um, with this blue background and to join our premium package just click the big red button here um, and for the general IELTS you can visit us uh, at G-I-E-L-T-S help.com it's this green background uh, you can click this big red button um, here and it is a one-time payment for lifetime access. Now, students, uh, we have um, a, a very exciting new video that we just uh, released. Um, that video uh, is a speaking video, and it just aired about half an hour ago. Uh, so you can check that out uh, when you have some time. I'll put it into the chat. Um, there it is, it's on YouTube. And we have light hall classes in July, uh, which are classes on a new platform for live teaching. It works awesome. Uh, check that out when you have a chance. Um, I will put those classes into the chat as well. And then we'll get on with the reading class. In this reading class, by the way, we'll look at list of headings uh, types questions. That's uh, one of the uh, trickier ones for a lot of people. There we go. Our light hall classes. Um, so we have listening as well today. Our listening class will be uh, coming up after this uh, reading class uh, in about uh, 90 minutes. And, uh, and then we'll have task one writing and speaking for everybody uh, tomorrow. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my uh, email address. And of course, uh, to get our schedules, subscribe to this channel, uh, click the bell button to get notifications. And you can also visit us on our Instagram, IELTS underscore aehelp and gieltshelp. All right. So uh, let's get into uh, today's reading. This is our second passage from our 10th exam. And um, in this uh, reading, you have uh, the uh, list of headings question. Now, you'll notice that the list of headings question is the very first piece of information that you see uh, when you have this kind of passage. That's because the examiners think it's a good idea to look at this question early on. Okay. All right. Uh, Carolina, we will have a Discord class as well on the 24th. Thank you for asking. Uh, that will come after the Light Hall class. So we're going to have a Light Hall class and then that will be followed by a Discord class. So thanks for asking about that. We also have our Discord partners, IELTS Prep, and we will have a class there on the 24th. We'll start discussing that a little bit later on next week. Um, all right, so uh, let's look at the title first. So when you're looking at an IELTS reading passage, your first step is to look at um, the uh, title of the passage. This is absolutely uh, the most important, okay? So look at the title and think about what it could mean, what you might read about in the passage. So here it says, a territorial dispute between friends, Canada and the United States. Okay, now this is a reading lesson, everyone. So make sure to read with me, okay? When you read the uh, title, you should think about um, what is this? Okay, so here I'm reading a territorial dispute between friends. So this means that it's a conflict between two 
uh, neighboring countries about land. Okay, land is territory, and conflict is dispute. So it's another way to say dispute. Okay. So when I read a title in the IELTS, I very quickly think about the what, why, how questions. Okay. So when I think about the why, the why question would be, uh, why are these countries um, arguing about land? That's right, Arda, it could be disagreement as well. Well, when you say dispute, it's disagreement, it's conflict. So, um, Amu, Arda, Carolina Harwinder, um, why do you think that um, these two countries, Canada and the United States, could be arguing about land? What is the purpose? So what's the reason? And just think logically here. So why do most countries um, have land disputes? What's the, what's the logic? of that. Okay, so why would most countries have some kind of a dispute over land? Okay, and again in the real IELTS you want to be as quick as possible. It, they don't have to be perfect answers. You will get more help from looking at the questions as well. Okay, um, Carolina says resources, the land might be beneficial for them. Absolutely. The land has some kind of value. Uh, Carolina says resources. Okay. Uh, resources would be like um, trees, uh, fish, um, gold, silver, right? So uh, water, okay, those would all be uh, the resources. Okay, and um, how? So how do countries dispute land? Right, that's the other um, question that you want to ask. So uh, again, I'm sitting in the aisles. This is very quick. This step only takes me a few seconds, maybe 10, 15 seconds of quick thinking. I read the title. A territorial dispute between friends Canada and the United States what is this okay it's some kind of an argument conflict disagreement between these two countries why is this happening probably because uh, the land is valuable for uh, resources uh, trees fish water minerals okay and then how do these countries dispute land? So what is the content that I'm going to read about? This is very important because this is the content, right? So this predicts the content that you will read about. Now, of course, once you have this information in your head before you start reading, you will understand the content much, much better. And of course, as many people who practice the IELTS and who did the IELTS before know, the IELTS reading is a lot about content, so understanding the content, right? So how do countries dispute land? Keep it simple. Um, for me, I know one of the first ones, sadly, that comes to mind is they war. They have a physical war to fight for the land, okay? But aside from a physical war, hopefully it's not always a physical war, right? Um, there are uh, land disputes. Yeah, Arda says they fight. Harwinder says they have treaty speeches. Yeah, and Harwinder, we can say uh, the, that the uh, speeches are like politics, right? So political arguments, uh, treaties, uh, debates, Right? Absolutely. Okay? So that's how they do it. All right. So again, this step should only take you 20, 30 seconds. Okay? Now, um, you look at list of headings. All right? So uh, list of headings, questions, 
it's the only question that has extra information that's wrong and it's the only question that's given to you before the passage that you should read okay now when you read it and when you're practicing at home ideally you're paraphrasing the content okay which means that you're restating it um, in your own words all right so let me show you what I mean so here we have the list of headings and here we have the first one which is the Treaty of St. Petersburg between Russia and America so I can say uh, the agreement of St. Uh, Petersburg between Russia and the US okay so this would be my paraphrase uh, this sentence okay is the same as this sentence now here I don't have a lot of paraphrasing but maybe this agreement for the word treaty okay so those two words paraphrase each other and I just paraphrased America to the US the reason I'm doing this is because the way that IELTS works is the passage paraphrases the words in the questions so when you learn to see the question information in different ways then you learn to discover the answers uh, in the content okay and Amu, I can see that in the um, in the chat you did the same thing. So you wrote uh, the agreement of Saint uh, Petersburg between Russia and USA. So that's that's great. Okay, that's exactly how it should go. All right. Okay. So we do this for the rest of them, and you practice this at home. So do this with me, members. Do it for the next one. Uh, fishing and mining for gold in the Alaska panhandle. All right, well, let's do it. Um, paraphrasing doesn't have to be perfect, and it might not be the same as what you see in the passage. It's just simply a way to train your brain to see information differently. So fishing and mining for gold in the Alaska panhandle. Catching fish and digging for precious metals in the Alaska Panhandle. Alaska Panhandle is a piece of land, as we will discover. Okay, so there is uh, my uh, paraphrase. For that one okay um, Amu says fishing and gold excavation in the Alaska Panhandle very good Amu that's nice and that's fast that's great Amrit um, says sir I have difficulty finding keywords in the passage that's why Amrit because they're paraphrasing it so you don't see those keywords um, Sometimes there is no such match as a key word, Amri. Um, you really just have to understand the content, okay? All right, um, indigenous rights uh, in the Salmon Treaty of 1985. So Aboriginal uh, rights, um, Aboriginal privileges uh, in the Salmon uh, Treaty of 1985. Now, if you don't find um, a word in your own mind like privileges for rights, okay, then you can use the uh, review function in Microsoft Word and the, thes the thesaurus, don't forget that, okay? So the thesaurus has um, lots of words. Uh, a word that it's giving me right away is um, entitlements, permissions, okay? 
So permission or entitlement uh, would be other words here as well. So from the thesaurus, okay, I'm getting the word permission and entitlement. Okay, so those are two more words that also mean rights in this context. Okay, Amri, thanks for that super chat donation. That's awesome. All right. Yeah, so um, <clears throat> we have uh, we have the right paraphrasing, and when you have this paraphrasing, of course, one other reason that you're doing this is because you're learning a lot of new vocabulary. So when you realize that, okay, some other ways to say the word rights are privileges, permissions, entitlement, then um, you can use that in your speech and in your writing, okay? So new words, read them in your uh, speech and writing, okay? All right, um, the next one, the dispute is adjudicated. Okay. So here, um, the agreement is, and then you might say, well, Adrian, I don't know the meaning of the word adjudicated. What does that mean, right? So how do I figure out a word that I don't know? All right. One way to do it is you can break the word down into its components, okay? Words um, generally will have a root, a prefix, and a suffix. It means a beginning piece. Here, the beginning piece is ad, um, judicate, and then ed at the end, okay? So it has three parts. And uh, here, I'm going to try to figure out what this word means. Now, the way I do this is by looking at the root. I try to think of other words that have this kind of Judd or Judy um, at the uh, beginning part. And I might realize that the words judge or jury uh, kind of sound similar, okay? And I might be able to figure out that it means that this um, dispute is uh, discussed uh, legally, politically, okay? Now, if I can't figure that out, then just leave it, go to the next one, okay? So, the disagreement is argued in a legal and political context. Okay, and again, if you can't figure it out, just leave it, go to the next one, All right? So this is my uh, paraphrase here. Yeah, Arda says the disagreement is political, and if you can figure that out, that's fine, that's great. All right, okay, so far so good. Um, so I keep going in the same way. Um, and um, nice and fast, okay? The trick is to do this regularly at home so you can go nice and fast. So just read with me. A treaty draws ambiguous lines. An agreement uh, creates unclear borders, okay? An uncertain future for the region's sovereignty an unclear um, future for the territory's independence. Okay, sovereignty and independence are synonyms. An unheard voice in the battle for sovereignty, a um, group that is ignored in the fight uh, for freedom. 
Okay, freedom and independence are very close as well. So a group that is ignored, an unheard voice would be a person or a group, right, that we cannot hear, that we're not paying attention to. All right, Haida Gwaii and Prince of Wales Island. I'm just going to leave that. Those are the names of islands. There's no point to paraphrase, so ignore names. Okay, there's no way to paraphrase it. It's a set of islands in the region, right? Um, overlapping fishing claims. Okay, so um, conflicting. rights to fishing and again just do your best if you're not able to paraphrase some of these don't worry about it uh, a territory desired by many nations a region that is wanted by uh, many countries or I can even say a lot of countries your goal is to paraphrase as much as possible without losing information and without adding your own information, okay? So here is my paraphrase. I've paraphrased all of these options from one to 10. Okay, I can see in Roman numerals here, we've got I, 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 all the way down to X, which is Roman numeral 10. All right, so again, this first step in list of headings is to paraphrase each possible choice, okay? So when you practice at home, now you probably won't be able to do this in the real IELTS unless you're very, very quick. Um, so in the real IELTS, you're only doing this in your head, but at home you're doing it on paper or on computer like I just did, okay? So when you uh, practice this at home, paraphrase on paper or computer, uh, during the IELTS you will do this in your head only to save time okay that's right Serena yeah um, in the in the IELTS when you're doing the live exam you have 20 minutes for each passage so obviously it would take too much time to sit there and think about each one of these but if you've been doing it at home and you practiced it with a few different um, uh, list of headings questions, then it will be easier, then you will be able to do a better job quicker. All right. Okay, um, so now um, before we read the passage, let's take a look at the questions that come after the passage, All right? So here we have matched the following people or peoples with facts about them from the passage. Okay, so we have a matching answer and this one's quite tricky for a lot of uh, candidates as well. So we have salmon fishers. We have uh, indigenous uh, peoples. We have Russian explorers and we have international tribunal participants. Okay, so we've got four groups of people here, A, B, C, D, and we have to put the correct letter into uh, the four questions, 21, 22, 23. Now, all of this information is somewhere in the passage because we have four options and we have uh, four different questions. So it says you may use any letter more than one, so maybe one of these will not be used. We don't know that yet, but definitely all of this is in the passage, okay? So we want to read um, these questions before we read the passage. And again, at home, you should paraphrase it, all right? So here we go with the first one, had various interests with respect to the Alaska boundary dispute, okay? Um, so again, here at home, I would simply paraphrase this, okay? During the IELTS, you can only do it in your head, okay? Had several uh, different desires in connection to the uh, disagreement 
of the Alaskan border. Okay, so that would be my paraphrase. Again, just nice and quick, as best as you can. Until recently, lacked a voice in sovereignty discussions. Okay, so until current time, uh, did not have um, a place in the um, fight for independence. Debates. Okay, so that would be my way to uh, paraphrase that. Okay, the first inhabitants of the land in question, the original um, people that lived um, in this territory. Okay. And some of you are probably starting to see that even logic might be able to help you answer some of these questions almost without reading. And that's very true. Uh, when you have good thinking, good paraphrasing, you can actually figure out some of the questions, um, correct answers without reading. Now you have to be careful because the reading might tell you different information. So be careful not to assume, but you can use intelligent inference, okay? Um, made up multiple nationalities in the region, including indigenous people. So made up of multiple nationalities in the region, including indigenous people. Okay, so comprised of uh, several ethnicities in the region, as well as uh, aboriginals. Okay, all right. So again, paraphrasing these, it's going to help me understand. Now, another important point here, members, that you might have realized is this passage so far, it's basically impossible to skim and scan for answers. So if you're one of those people who thinks you can figure out um, these answers by skimming and scanning, this paragraph would be a nightmare, okay? You would be really jumping all over the place. This kind of passage really uh, has to come from reading and from understanding the content. All right, um, and then here, complete each sentence with the correct ending, A to F below. So we have three uh, sentences here that we have to finish, okay? We've got half of the sentence here, and we need to figure out this part of the sentence. So what's the end of each of these uh, sentences? And we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six choices. So we've got three questions. We've got six choices, so three choices are correct, three choices are wrong, we don't know which, but we can certainly figure those out, okay? There are definitely some strategies that can help us. We do not read the choices because we don't know which ones are wrong, which ones are correct, and that can be confusing. So we simply just focus on reading the question only, or the first half of the sentence, because we know that this is definitely somewhere in this passage. All right. Now again, paraphrasing. So the key word of today's lesson is paraphrase. All right, if you've forgotten to do that um, in recent days or weeks of study, go back to it and paraphrase, okay? Uh, here we go. So Novo Arkhangelsk was a Russian settlement located. All right, so we can say Uh, Novo Ark Hungelsk uh, was a Russian village found in. Okay, that would be my uh, paraphrase. The settlement would be like a village or a town. Um, it's where a group of people gather. Okay, settle, settlement. The battle between the Russians and the British, uh, the war uh, between the Russians and the Brits. Okay, sometimes paraphrasing is as 
quick as that, all right? And then the Alaska purchase resulted among other effects, okay? So buying Alaska had the following consequences including, right? So that would be my paraphrase there. Now, when you're at home, and of course you have time and you're really paying attention and focusing, reread all of the originals, all of the paraphrasing. For now, we are going to read, and then we are going to um, solve these uh, list of headings questions, okay, together. So list of headings questions, the second step is uh, read each paragraph, okay? And when you read a paragraph, so read each, read each paragraph, um, after you read each paragraph, ask yourself, what is this paragraph about. Okay, this is very important for reading comprehension. And answer the question. Okay, and then find, not before, but only after, then find the closest matching list of heading, keeping in mind your paraphrase. Okay, now if that's confusing, don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so um, here we go. Let's take a look at uh, this reading passage and I will read the first paragraph and then solve the first list of heading uh, follow with me, read with me, please, here, students, okay? All right. Here we go. So, a territorial dispute between friends, Canada and the United States. Paragraph A. What do gold and salmon have in common? Believe it or not, they are both the causes of an international boundary dispute that has been simmering for over a hundred years and has involved Canada, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Russia. The story of the Alaska boundary dispute begins with the Russian exploration and colonization of the region from the 1780s until 1867. The Russians had set up settlements such as Novo Arkhangelsk, 1799, along the panhandle of Russian America the long and thin southernmost area of the region which bordered British territory at the time and borders Canadian territory today. During the 19th century, Russian explorers, fishermen, whalers, and traders populated the area as it was rich in both salmon and sea otters the latter of which was an incredibly valuable resource in the European fur trade of the time. The presence of British and American explorers also increased during this time. The Americans had an interest in extending their influence from California northward along the Pacific coast, and the British had an interest in pushing back what they felt was Russian incursion on British lands. Perhaps worst of all, the indigenous Haida and Tlingit peoples were caught in the middle of a burgeoning conflict. Their traditional and ancestral lands would be fought over, 
for over 200 years with little regard for sovereignty. Awesome! Not so much, right? Conflict is never good. But um, we read it, and there were some tricky words, and I didn't pronounce some of the words perfectly. It doesn't matter. The most important, especially for this passage, especially for questions in this passage, is to get the content of what I'm reading. So here I ask myself, what is this paragraph about? So I go, Adrian, what is this paragraph about? Okay. Yep. Nope, nope, that one. What is this paragraph about? And I have an answer. At first I was kind of like, oh, this is really confusing. What are they talking about here? But you know what? I got it. I, th I don't think it's that bad. I think there's a simpler kind of, um... let me try to adjust the screen here. There we go. I'm gonna make this bigger for everybody so you can, there, here. Why didn't somebody say something? There, let's make that nice and big. There you go. Now it's easier to read. How about that? There, okay. All right, let's get even the tools out of the way. Nice and clean, there we go. Arda says, it's a little history about Alaska and types of people living in Alaska. I don't think so, Arda. I don't think that's the best answer for me. I think it's um, many different groups of people um, fighting or interested in the same piece of land. Did anybody else get that from reading this passage? I mean, and again, you know, sometimes candidates freak out. They're like, I don't know about American history. Where's the Alaskan Panhandle? I don't know where this piece of land is. Who are these people? Um, who are these British, right? And so you don't need to understand it. Nobody expects you to learn um, American 17th century history in your classes in India or in um, Bangladesh or in Taiwan, okay? Um, they just expect you, the IELTS examiners expect you to understand the content of what you're reading, regardless of your background knowledge here, right? So here it seems like, okay, I read about the Russians, I read about the Americans, I read about the indigenous people there, and it seems like they all have some interest in this piece of land and this is starting to become a problem. Did anybody else get that? Hopefully. And then uh, we can try to figure out which of these choices is the closest match. Okay, so we have Treaty of St. Petersburg, uh, nothing about that. Fishing and mining, I don't think so. It said a little bit about gold and fishing, but that definitely wasn't the main focus here. Uh, indigenous rights, Salmon Treaty, I didn't read anything about that. The dispute is adjudicated. Did we read about political um, arguments, um, political courts? No, we didn't read anything like that. All right. Um, the treaty draws ambiguous lines, so unclear borders. I don't feel like that paragraph focused on that. Uncertain future for the region's freedom. Uh, not really it kind of felt like that but that's not a really close match an unheard voice in the battle for sovereignty so a group that's being ignored I didn't really see that by the way you should always look at the originals not your paraphrase um, paraphrasing okay Amu says it's region needed by many nations let's see we're, we've got a couple more coming up Okay, um, Haida Gwaii and Prince of Wales Island, overlapping fishing claims and a territory desired by many nations. Which one do you think is the closest match? Amrit says, hey, that's 10, right? Um, a territory desired by many nations. Arda agrees. Arda says, hey, that looks like that's kind of what they were talking about. Um, is it? 
many different groups of people fighting interested in the same piece of land, a territory desired by many nations? Absolutely. Yeah, it's X. No doubt about it. Okay. Now, I want you to really pay attention to this, Harwinder, Zarina, Amu, Arda. If I'm not doing it this way, it would be really easy to make a mistake and go with something like an unclear future for the region sovereignty or um, fishing and mining for gold in Alaska Panhandle. So maybe just looking at a part of it, okay? Like some um, students, they learn this technique of, oh, just read the first sentence. And then, so the student reads, uh, what do gold and salmon have in common? Believe it or not, they are both the causes of an international dispute. Now, if you're using that strategy, there's a very good chance that you're going to make the mistake of choosing this answer, which is fishing and mining for gold in Alaska Panhandle. And if you choose this answer, then obviously it will be a big X, it will be wrong. The correct answer is definitely uh, number 10, which is a territory desired by many nations, because the question is what is the paragraph about, not what is the first two sentences about, okay? So everybody be really careful with this, all right? Clear, everybody's on the same page? So a territory desired by many nations, so for paragraph A, we put in X, and uh, voila, we have the correct answer. We've got one point for this reading passage and we move on. Zarina says, thumbs up. All right, and move on we shall, but um, I don't want to wreck all the fun. I want to give you a chance uh, to do this with me. So let's do this together, all right? Um, I'm going to reach out to our members and members you will have a chance now to read a passage and then um, answer these questions don't panic I will help you uh, go to our website please now so go to uh, aehelp.com okay so again this is aehelp.com all right um, at aehelp.com, again, everybody, to uh, join our premium IELTS package, uh, you can um, click this big red button that's just uh, right behind my head there. Uh, and for our members, uh, log into your My Student account. And in your My Student account, uh, please click on a student partner speaking. Okay, student partner speaking is right there. Uh, we use this function regularly in our classes. This is one of the reasons it's a really good idea to get our premium package, spend a few dollars, you get lifetime access and then you can follow with these classes in a much better way, okay? Um, so click on student partner speaking, uh, accept the speaking terms that uh, you are going to, um, you know, be polite and respectful and you're responsible for your uh, language. And then um, send me a message. So you will see me as master and I'm looking for reading volunteers right now, uh, members to read and then answer these passages and I will guide you, so don't panic, okay? It's a good chance for you to practice your reading and practice solving these list of headings questions. So look for master, okay? Um, when you found me, when you found master, then uh, click on the blue envelope um, here Zarina has the blue envelope there so you want to click on that and then say I will we'll read a paragraph I will volunteer and as soon as I see that I will respond and you can start reading and then figure out our second list of headings question okay and I can see Yash is volunteering now um, here, first priority is for our members, so Amrit and Zarina, if you want to volunteer. But if I do not get members volunteering, then I will 
uh, of course, take other viewers as well. And that's why it's good to take part in these classes, even if you're not a member, because you might have a chance to uh, participate. All right, so we've got a member volunteer in Zarina. Okay, Zarina says, help me kill anxiety, I would love to volunteer. Yeah, and one great way to kill anxiety, Zarina, is by volunteering. So, uh, sure, are you ready? Okay, and we'll do paragraph two together. All right. So, Zarina, if you're ready, let me know. I will call you. Hi, Zarina. Hi, sir. Good morning. How and are you? I'm great, thank you. And good evening to you, I'm guessing, right? Because you are in the Philippines, if I remember correctly, from yesterday. Sir? Yes. I can Please hold it. I will just uh, mute my YouTube. Okay, so you've got a little bit of delay then. Um, okay. okay, sir. Zarina. Um, yes, sir. Read this uh, paragraph for us, uh, nice and loud, and then we'll discuss it. So, paragraph B, whenever you are ready. Okay, sir. Uh, 1825 Street is uh, 1825 Street of St. Petersburg's between the British and Russians set the boundary between Russian. America, modern Alaska, USA, and British North America, modern Yukon Territory, and British Columbia, Canada. But, unfortunately, the agreement did not firmly set the boundary in the Panhandle region. This ambiguity did not matter for decades. In, in fact, following the American purchase of Russian America in 1867, known as the Alaska Purchase. The Canadian government wanted to clarify the Alaska-British Columbia border. The American government rejected the proposal because it did not matter to them enough to warrant the cost of such survey. This all changed when gold was discovered in the nearby Yukon Territory belonging to Canada in 1987. Very nice, 1897. But not, doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter, yes, Zarina. Sir. Doesn't matter. Um, all right, um, Zarina, good. Okay, that reading is fine. So your speed of <laughs> reading is absolutely okay. So you don't have to worry about your fluency for the IELTS. Um, what you have to focus on, of course, is content. So understanding what you read. And you don't have to understand every little detail for IELTS to get a band seven. But you do have to understand all of the main concepts, okay? So, um, right now, you want to ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? So just repeat after me. What is this paragraph about? What is this paragraph about? And now answer the question. What is this paragraph about, according to you? If I would answer this, it just I can see that, uh, words that about purchase. Mm -hmm. And then the ambiguity did not matter for decades. What ambiguity? The borders. Very good. So, very good. Okay. So, the ambiguity of borders did not matter for decades until when? <laughs> Mm -hmm. What does that mean? So, Zarina, according to you, what does that mean, the ambiguity of borders? Mm. So, we can, see, we can see here at the top, you have the word boundary, right? Boundary is another yes, way sir. to say border. And then yes, you have the word boundary here again. 
when you see this kind of redundancy of words, you definitely want to pay attention uh, to that. Um, we also see the word border, I believe, somewhere as well. Um, so definitely important, right? Yes. So here, you're very close. You're starting to feel it. So if you want to answer this, what is this paragraph about? It means unclear borders create problems, right? So um, it sounds like, okay, America bought this piece of land from the Russians. There's some boundaries between this piece of land and other pieces of land, uh, but they're not clear. We don't know exactly where that line is. Okay. Um, these days, of course, in the world, we have very clear lines. That's where your country starts. This is where my country starts. But we still have um, these similar kinds of issues in many parts of the world. Like a good example for many of our viewers is in northern India uh, with um, uh, the uh, China-Pakistan-India disputes over the northern regions uh, of uh, Kashmir and I believe Jaipur and such. So. Um, so we still have these issues, uh, certainly in some parts of the world, we still have them in US Canada even. So there's some kind of unclarity of, of borders and boundaries here. Okay, and if you got that much, Zarina, you're definitely on the right track. So now you can look at the choices and we can try to figure out which one is the best. So number one, the Treaty of St. Petersburg, mm, not really, right? Fishing and mining for the gold in the Alaska Panhandle, eh, no, not, not really what we're talking about. In, indigenous rights, not so much. Uh, the dispute is adjudicated, not so much. Um, a treaty draws ambiguous lines. What do you think about that one? I can consider it. You can consider it, yeah, absolutely, right? What's the treaty? here what's the agreement mm. ambiguous lines is the unclear borders that we're talking about right the treaty that mm. we're talking about could be the Americans buying the land from the Russians right so when you make a purchase especially a land purchase you basically have a contract some kind of a treaty right so we can consider it for sure okay and that's good Let's not stop there. Let's read the rest of them. So an uncertain future for the region's sovereignty, mm, an unheard voice in the battle for sovereignty. We haven't really talked or read too much about fighting for freedom yet. Um, yes. Haida Gwaii, Prince of Wales, overlapping fishing claims, a territory desired by many nations. Okay, now that I read all of them, or now that you read all of them, which one do you think is the best? I would choose the treaty draws ambiguous lines. Yeah, I would too. So we're confident enough, right? And when you're doing the IELTS, you might never be 100% sure. So you might just be 90% sure or 80% sure. But if you feel 80% sure, Zarina, that this is the best answer based on what you understood from that passage, then you just choose it and you move on. And it is the correct answer here. Okay? So that's how you do it, right? Um, yes, sir. So again, you don't have to understand every detail. Pay attention to uh, the repetitive words, okay? And, uh, and always think about it first on your own. All right. And be confident, Zarina, because yes. I, I felt that you yes, were really sir. kind of like unsure. You're like, I it's boundary, ambiguous boundary. Um, so be confident. Believe in yourself. OK, you have good <laughs> English. Right? OK. Yes. Yeah, All right. OK, Zarina. Thank you for reading paragraph B. We'll try to find someone else for paragraph C. I'll stop. Torturing <laughs> Thank you, you. sir. Okay? Have All a right. nice day. OK. Bye, Zarina. Okay, Bye. so that was Zarina volunteering from uh, the Philippines and she was doing a fantastic job. All right, um, let's see, we have some other volunteers here. I'm surprised we don't have more. Um, maybe people are really freaked out about reading, um, which you shouldn't be, okay? Reading is fun, reading should be fun. People have forgotten how much fun reading really is. Okay, um, well, let's see if Yash uh, it would like to volunteer. So, hi, Yash. Are you ready? Would you like to solve a paragraph? 
for list of headings. Let's see if Yash is still with us and still into uh, reading a paragraph here. And Sarah, I can see you there as well, so no worries. If uh, Yash doesn't get back to me here, then uh, we'll get your help here in a second. And if Yash does get back to me, Sarah, and you hang in there, then I will get your help next. All right. Okay, there's Yash. All right. Hi, Yash. Okay, there's Yash. Hi, sir. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, yes, just mute YouTube so we're not getting that echo feedback. Yes, I already muted that, sir. Perfect. All right, Yash, so help us out here with paragraph C. By the way, good to have you back. Yeah. Okay, Yash, um, here we go. So I've brought up the uh, paragraph. Whenever you're ready, just start reading paragraph C. The Klondike uh, Gold Rush transformed a uh, simmering dispute into inferior. Canada wanted a direct route through Canadian territory to the Pacific Ocean to get their gold onto ship and transport it to market. The United States, meanwhile, wanted to keep control of the coastal territory. The two sides could not come up with an agreement, and therefore the dispute went to an international tribunal, tribunal in 1993, a kind of court where supposedly unbiased group of people would decide the issue. The jury was made up six men, no woman, three Americans, two Canadians, and one Briton. Indigenous voices were not heard. The Americans were all politicians, while the Canadians were not partisan jurists, lawyers, and scholars. And the Briton was Lord Elverston, Lord Chief Justice of England. The Americans and Canadian representatives favored their own government's claims, so it was up to Lord Elverston. To the Canadian public's disbelief, Lord Elverston decided in favor in favor of the American American claim. Canada was a British domain at the time, a partially independent nation with very strong ties to Britain, and Canadians felt betray betrayed by their colonial government. Canada had lost the dispute but refused to sign the resulting document. Though the decision became internationally low, Canada did not endorse it and the dispute over the reason continues to this day. Okay. All right. Good, Yash. Ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? And yeah, then, it's... Just repeat after me, Yash. Really just ask yourself, hey, Yash, what is this paragraph about? Like, ha have that discussion with yourself. So what is this paragraph about? I think this this is the discuss between the part those uh, 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 situated between America and Canada and border. So Canada wanted to get that uh, part, but the uh, this uh, uh, the conflicts uh, goes into the court, and there were also a number of peoples like three peoples they described uh, one of Canadian, U.S. and the other one from British. So okay. Canada. Yes, yeah, well, I'm going to slow you down. Yes, yeah, I'm going to slow you down. So when you're doing list of headings, this is very important. Okay, when you're doing list of headings in the IELTS, um, you have to answer this question in a short way. Okay, so you should not be giving two, three, four sentences like what you're doing right now, but instead you should be just giving me one simple sentence. So I ask you, what is it about? Or you ask yourself, what is it about? and you give it the most simple answer that covers this whole paragraph. So what is this about in a very simple way? I think, I think you're telling me the correct answer. So what you're telling me, Yash, is correct, but you need to say all of that in one simple sentence. And I think you had it there. The, the one sentence was inside of all of those sentences. You said it. 
Um, yes. What was it? Canada, Canada wanted to grab this part, but they didn't get yet. And the uh, conflict like case is continues to grab that part. Mm, no. You said something about where they were fighting. Where were they fighting? So where was this fight being um, held? In what, what kind of context? They, they are wanted to grab the part between uh, Canada and US border. Which and is already are they, okay, but are they fighting physically? Like, did they send soldiers and are they, you know, shooting each other and blowing each other up? No, they they fight mm. in in a court, in okay. court. So right, like so the, that's what this paragraph is about, right? Is 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 a fight in court between Canada and the U.S. over this land? Would you agree with me, Yash, that that's basically what this paragraph is about? Yes, yes, but also they include the UK government, British colony. Yeah, the the British government is there as part of it, right? But it's basically a court dispute. Yes. Between U.S. and Canada, um, the U.K. they have representation, but it's mostly between the U.S. and Canada. So it's a court dispute between U.S. and Canada. Would you? Yeah. Would you know, Would you agree that that's basically what this is about? Like they said, like they can't agree. They both want it. They take it to court. We see a lot of legal words, like uh, right here. I can see just out of the corner of my eye the word law. Um, lost the dispute. Uh, another key piece there, right? Um, we can okay. see that um, they have representatives uh, in the court. They have jurists. Um, they yes. have lawyers and scholars, right? Um, we can see that. Uh, we can see the word politicians, right? So I can definitely see throughout this paragraph that it's really this legal dispute between Canada and U.S. over this okay. territory, right? Okay, yes. then um, let's figure out which one of these is the closest. Okay, so you tell me. I'm not going to spoil the fun for you this time. Um, you tell me which one of these would match closest to this legal dispute. Okay. Okay. The treaty of something no, that no. Keep it simple. Make sure it matches what we just talked about. Sir, I want to go for the fourth one. The dispute is adjudicated. Yeah, and you got but, it correct. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because we talked about that. Adjudicated means it's some kind of uh, political process, right? So here we yeah. have the paraphrase. The disagreement is argued in a legal and political context. That's exactly what this paragraph is about. The Americans, the Canadians, and the British legally arguing, fighting over this land in court, right? So the closest yeah. match is that one. Um, and again, just like what I said to Zarina, it's very tough to be 100% sure of your answer, especially in the real IELTS when you have stress and pressure, okay? But if you feel what you just said, like, I want to go for, then go for it. Don't change your answer. Don't pick something else because suddenly you think it's tricky or it has to be something different. No, if you feel that that's what you want to go for, then that's what you go for, okay? Yes, okay. All right. So you pick that, you put it in um, for that question, and you've got it correct, okay? Yes. All right. Now, remember, Yash, very important point that I gave you here is when you're doing this, when you're practicing this, you have to be able to answer the what is this paragraph about with a simple sentence. Like uh, the sentence shouldn't be more than like 10 words, okay? Okay. Even less. So if you're saying 30, 40 words to answer that question, it's too much. That's going to be confusing, okay? Yes. All right. Okay, Yash, keep up the good studies and thanks for coming and, and volunteering and hanging in there. That was great. Yeah, thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to read this. Absolutely. Keep up the good studies. Bye, Yash. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. 
All right, that was Yash. You can give Yash a thumbs up. Amu, I saw that you got that as well. That was really good. Okay, um, we've got some more volunteers. Uh, that's very good. So Sarah, I said that um, you are good to go if you're there. Let's see if you're ready. I'm still looking for our members. If our members are in the website, definitely send me a message. So are you ready, Sarah? Okay. Sarah says yes. Hello. Hi, Sarah. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing great. How about you? I'm doing pretty good, thanks. And Sarah, you are in France. Exactly. And you are in Marseille? Marseille, yeah. Marseille. My bad. <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> Sarah, uh, great. So have you been following the class? Yes. Awesome. So you know what to do, right? You get to yeah, read like a paragraph, paragraph D, and then ask yourself a question. So here is the passage. Uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead and read paragraph D for us. Today, there is no gold rush in the region. Rather, there is, there is salmon and a lot of it. Fishing rights are, are what matter in regards to the Alaska boundary dispute today. Central to this deba debate is the strait known as Dixon Entrance, which lies between Haida, Hawaii, Canada, and France of Falls Island, USA. The 193 agreement tried to settle this aspect of the dispute, but it again failed. Today, the United States claims fishing rights to the midway point between the northern edge of Haida, Haida Gway and the southern edge of Prince of Wales Island, while Canada claims virtually all of the marine territory south of France of Edward Island. All right. Now, first tip, Sarah. When you read a passage and you see all these kinds of names like Haida Gwaii, which is actually an indigenous um, word or words, um, you don't need to worry about the pronunciation. So just read through it. Okay, nobody's going to be, I'm not going to correct you, I'm not going to be like, it's Marseille. Um, <laughs> so yeah. it doesn't matter on the aisles. In real life, if we met for a cup of coffee and you didn't know the word, I would correct you. I would say it's Haida Gwaii. But, you know, in the aisles, what's more important is that you're fluent, that it doesn't stop you from understanding the content or the context. So that's why when you have difficult words, um, you just read through them, okay? All right, so uh, what are you reading here, Sarah? What is this about? Fishing right claims. Okay, um, yeah, so that was very simple. <laughs> You're almost the opposite of Yash. <laughs> Yash had, had too many words to describe the paragraph. <laughs> You're trying to describe it in two words. Um, yeah, I mean, that's okay. So, you know, maybe a little bit more uh, when you're doing this. So uh, what about the fishing rights claims? So what do you mean by that? Um, it changed because um, it was first uh, with the uh, uh, with the Canada and then with uh, the United States today. Kind of right. Okay, well, let's let's simplify it even further. So, um, when when is Canada and the United States fighting uh, over this part of the land and water for fishing rights claims? Is it hundreds of years ago? Is it now? Is it the future? When is this happening? Um, it's. Today? Yeah, you can see it, right? There's the word right there. It says today. Today. Right? Yeah. Okay, what was it in the past? Yes. Um, it was an, I, an agreement. Were, were they fighting over fish in the past? Like 200 years ago, were they fighting about the fish or was it something else? They weren't fighting about fishing. Right, they were fighting about gold, right? So, you know, interests yeah. change, right? And um, there were a lot more fish all over the world and less people. So 
wasn't that big of a problem. Now we have a lot more people, a lot less fish. So people are fighting more over fish. All right. Okay. So as long as you get that, sir, as long as you get, so you did have the right idea with your two or three words, but you want to be a little bit more specific. So if, if I asked myself, what is this paragraph about? I would say it's the modern day reason for fighting in this part of the world and it's for fish. So that's what I would kind of get from this paragraph, okay? All right, well, let's see if we can figure out which one of these um, answers is the right one. Can you tell me um, which one of these would match the closest to um, that answer? Is, it's, is it nine? What is nine? Can you read it? I, I put it up there. Just read it for us. Yeah. Overlapping fishing claims. Yeah. Is that close to what we're saying? What we're talking about? Arguments about fishing? Yeah. 100%. Absolutely, Sarah. Yeah. Be confident. Yeah, it's definitely. But it's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's right. It's correct. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah, it's United States and Canada these days fighting about fishing. Right, and you can tell that the um, the tense here is present tense. It's overlapping fishing claims. It's a general present tense, and that's pretty much what you said to me, right? So when I asked you what is this about, you said they're fighting about fishing, right? So that's close enough. Uh, look at my paraphrase, and this is why paraphrasing is important. My paraphrase is conflicting rights to fishing. That's how I paraphrased it. Uh, maybe if you were doing the IELTS, you would have paraphrased this as uh, fighting for fishing, something like that, right? So number nine, absolutely, sir, is the correct answer, okay? So list of headings is not that difficult when you know what you're doing, okay? When you're taking the correct steps, sir, it, it becomes a lot easier. In fact, when um, we train people this right strategy for this kind of a question, instead of getting just a couple answers correct for a list of headings, they almost always get all of them correct. So um, it becomes a much, much easier question uh, type when you understand the logic for it, okay? Exactly. All right, um, and just like what I was saying um, to Zarina and Yash, be confident. So when you feel, okay, this is about United States, Canada fighting for fish, then, you know, be confident. Say, okay, that's what it is. That's what I'm going to choose. Whatever's closest to that one. Okay? Yes. All right. Um, Sarah, well, I hope you have a lovely rest of your day in France. And uh, hopefully we will see you in class again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for reading. Bye. Goodbye. All right. That was... Um, that was Sarah, and yeah, our line was a little bit uh, staticky, so I don't think we heard each other perfectly well, but well enough to figure out the answers, okay? All right, um, we've got uh, Devraj, Chris, Gagandeep, Shab, Divya in here as well. Uh, again, members, you have first rights to volunteering, so if I see you in here, Amu, Arda, Practice, practice makes perfect. Um, Devraj, hi, are you ready to volunteer? Okay, let's see if Devraj is here and then uh, Devraj can volunteer for the next paragraph. Once again, list of headings, you practice this, you do this a few times, you're golden. All right, there we go. Good job, Sarah. Hi, Devraj. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm great. How are you, sir? I am doing fantastic. Now that I've got half a cup of coffee in me, I am wide awake. <laughs> so, doing good. Well, it's 1.30 people watching me. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. It's only 130. At least it's not 2,000, right? Can I more? <laughs> That's way too much, sir. And if it were only two, then I would be worried. What's going on? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Absolutely number. We're right. a good number. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, Devraj. So just like uh, with the previous students, um, you just simply um, read the paragraph, and then uh, we'll focus on the main concept.
by asking ourselves and it's so important to always ask yourself first so uh, whenever you are ready uh, go ahead and read okay. uh, paragraph uh, E um, all right uh, so can you just scroll down a bit a little bit uh, yes okay so can I start yes Okay, over the past 40 years, there have been numerous uh, minor skirmish in these waters. These have been mediated by short-term agreement between Canada and the US. The Pacific Salmon Treaty of 1985, for example, but they have never been definitely solved. To this day, numerous um, breaches of Sovereign Canadian territory in the region are reported by Canadian fisher. The American fisher, however, believe they are fishing in their national water. The Pacific Salmon Treaty expired on 31st December, 31 December 2019, and it is unclear what will become of the dispute waters. Okay. So ask yourself, what is this paragraph about? Uh, um, I'm sure it's about um, uh, fishing and dispute water. Okay, it's about fishing and dispute, but the last one was also about fishing and dispute. So it could be that maybe we made a mistake in the last one, but I don't think so. So if we kind of look at this a little bit more carefully, what do we get a feeling of in this paragraph so it says over the past 40 years that there have been skirmishes which means fights and then there have been agreements read that last sentence again the very last sentence the pacific settlement treaty expired on 31 december 2019 and it is unclear what will become of that dispute to waters yeah and that gives us a a very good feeling of what this paragraph is actually talking about. Yeah, I think it's about uh, some kind of treaty which expired. Okay, so let me ask you this, and this is one way, one way, if you're not sure, and this is for every student who's watching, if you're not exactly sure what this paragraph could be about, one extra step that you can take is to ask more questions, right? Like, right. um, for example, uh, who will be fishing there um, next year? So in 2023, who do you think is going to be fishing there? Canadians or Americans? Um, I think Canadian. Oh, I love you. But the, tr <laughs> but the truth is we don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I, but I like how you... I'm Canadian, so I, I got to go with what you're saying. Um, but no, we, 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 we don't know, right? According to this yeah. paragraph, we have no idea because it sounds like it just keeps bouncing between Americans, Canadian fishermen, and sometimes we even have... Yeah, because actually, from... sir, uh, American fisher believe that they were fishing in their national water, so... I think that treaty expired in 2019. Yeah, it expired. So we don't know, right? There's no agreement in place. The boundary is still unclear. Um, and okay. uh, whenever you have this, okay, this word will, um, pay really careful attention to the word will because will okay. is the future. And usually essays and passages don't use the word will. It's very rare that they use this word. Um, we okay. usually keep essays in present tense. So this part of the essay it's almost the end right it's almost the conclusion the last paragraph okay. it's kind of talking about the future yeah. it's like the last one talked about now so when we just talked with sarah she said now when i asked her like when is this and she said it's today right yeah um and this is kind of talking about the future right it's future what, what, what yes. will happen in the future so if i ask myself what is this paragraph about i would say well there's obviously some issues for fishing in the region today and we're not really sure what's going on in the future with who's fishing there and who has rights so i think it's kind of unresolved it's definitely unresolved and it, there's a lack of clarity for the future so if we look at the choices um which one do you think matches the best i'll even shorten your choices here to these uh seven Okay. It's uh, somewhere in here. Um, I think fifth point. Can you read it? Uh, an agreement. I think. Uh, all right. Um, a treaty draws ambiguous line. An agreement creates unclear. 
no, no one does. No, and we already had that answer for the beginning. That was our answer for number one, right? For number Actually, one, I was not the best. watching from the start. Yeah, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> that's totally okay, and that's that would obviously create that issue. So uh, if you were here from the beginning, you would know that it can't be that one because that was definitely the best answer for the first paragraph A. So if it's not that okay. one, what would be your second choice? Um, I think six would be the next not next but no yeah. it's and and yeah. that should be that should have been the one that you should have gone with first because it has the word future right and it's the yes. only word that indicates that um future participle will right so yes an uncertain future for the region right we don't know there's no treaty so it's an unclear future that's really yes. what this paragraph is emphasizing okay, okay. so six would be the best answer here um, and make sure that when you're choosing the answer that matches your answer it matches accurately so if you're saying like will be like we don't know what will be then there has to be some part of the answer that is about the future either the word will yes. or future or it could be going to yes. so there's going to be more problems in this area okay so like it has to be some kind of a future indication okay 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 all right um tricky one but uh we got there so another important tip there uh devraj is you have to go from beginning to the end so whenever you're doing list of headings uh, and you're practicing okay. at home make sure that you okay. do all of the list of headings in one study session okay all right all right devraj thank you so much for volunteering and i hope you thank have you, sir. an awesome rest of your evening thank you so same to you thank you bye devraj Okay, that was Devraj, uh, really good. All right, uh, we've got one more paragraph and we've got one more volunteer, it's Shub. Um, Shub says, I'm a member, let me volunteer. Okay, Shub, sure. Uh, are you ready? I just maybe didn't see you in our class list today. You can finish it off for us so you get the conclusion. If you're still there, Shub, let me know. Okay. And thank you for being our member, by the way, Shub. So hopefully you are there. We've got one more to go, one more to go, Shub. And then we're done. So far so good. I hope that everybody's picking up on all, all of these points that I'm giving you. So obviously I've given you a lot of different um, tips on what you need to do for a list of headings. Most importantly, paraphrase them when you're practicing at home the choices secondly read a paragraph ask yourself what it's about answer on your own and then find the closest match make sure it has all of the elements of your thoughts of what you're giving as the answer uh, make sure that you answer in a short way but not too short so it includes the whole idea of the paragraph. You shouldn't be thinking about the answer in many, many sentences, all right? Okay, I'm not sure what has happened to Shub, but that's okay. Um, well, we have one more volunteer here, Gagandeep, sure. Gagandeep just volunteered, so are you ready? We'll try to hook up with Gagandeep here. Uh, Gagandeep, if you are ready, if you are there, let me know, and then you can finish this off for us just volunteered so hopefully you didn't jump up from your keyboard yes you are hi Gagandi hello sir how are you I am fine. What about you, sir? I am doing great. Gagandeep, are you ready to help us finish this reading passage for the list of headings? Gagandeep, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Are, are you ready to read? Yes, sir. I'm All ready. right. Then paragraph F. Let's do it. Whenever you're ready, just start. Okay, sir. Uh, lost in the friction between colonial powers over the centuries has been the voice of the indigenous peoples of the region. The Haida and Tlingit 
have been fishing the area for countless thousands of years and not only have they had their territory ripped from their hands but they have also had their ancestral rights to fish their waters diminished as well today the canadian government aims to mitigate these wrongs by recognizing and formalizing into laws indigenous rights to fish in the area in whatever future agreement comes to be between Canada and the United States. Okay, so what is this paragraph about? So, uh, they are talking about the today scenario, uh, what they are doing to mitigate these wrongs. For who? Uh, so to uh, mitigate the indigenous rights to fish area. That's your answer. Uh, that was your answer right there. Okay, what is this paragraph about? It's about the rights of the indigenous people in this area. Why? Why is that a concern? Uh, so uh, to, uh, to ease this friction, so as the Partly, but importantly, it's because the pe the indigenous people never had uh, any kind of uh, effect or never, never had any kind of part in these decisions, right? So let's take a look at the choices and see which one matches the closest, okay? Okay, sir. Um, and I'll kind of help you here. So take a look at the choices and let me know uh, which one you think is the best answer. I think uh, the uh, third one, indigenous rights in the Salmon Treaty. Did you read about the Salmon Treaty? Uh, no, sir. Not so it can't be that treaty. one. You should never choose an answer okay. that has content which you didn't read about. So if you didn't read about a Salmon Treaty of 1985, definitely don't choose that. Just because it has the word indigenous doesn't make it the correct answer. If it has information sure, that's not in there, like Salmon Treaty, it's not going to be the correct answer. So it's a different one. Which one do you think it is? Okay, sir. Uh, so... so. There's, uh, so I can't find one uh, that is matching to this. Okay, well let me help you a little bit here. There's a couple of our members in the chat that have it correct. And they're kind of really trying to get help you out. They're like, come on, this is the one. <laughs> um, it's uh, the correct answer here is seven. Um, unheard voice in the okay. battle for sovereignty. So the unheard voice is the voice of the indigenous people, right? This paragraph says okay. that the indigenous people never had a say in um, uh, who has rights to fishing should. there. Exactly. And now okay. Canada is saying, well, we're going to make sure that that changes in the future. So the best answer here is number seven for this last one. Okay. Okay, so a, one last really important point with this list of headings types questions is you should never choose an answer just because it has a matching word like indigenous. Um, if it has other information like Salmon Treaty of 1985, that's wrong. And definitely that's going to be a wrong answer. No question about it. So it has to be some other paraphrasing. Okay. Um, so here okay, is so number sure. seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So be really careful with that. Okay, Gagandi? Okay, so fine. All right, Gagandeep, have an awesome rest of your day. Come back again, try again, and um, work on this reading passage. So this reading passage has more questions, and I'm going to encourage everybody to solve those remaining questions, okay? Okay, sir. All right, bye, Gagandeep. Okay, sir, bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. So that was Gagan Deep, and uh, he got a tough one there, but uh, there was a lot of paraphrasing with that question. And um, 
the rest of the questions in this passage, I'm going to encourage you to do on your own. So we have this question here where you have to match the group of people to the right number. Okay, so A, B, C, or D for 20, 21, 22, 23. So which group of people matches uh, with which one here? And then you have the sentence ending. So you have to figure out the endings for these three sentences here. Uh, you can check this video again later. It will be available on our channel. Um, and send your answers to my email. I will show you my email again. So my email is adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, send your answers for those other questions and I'll send you back the answer key so you can practice those questions as well. Today's focus was on list of headings questions and I hope that all of you have learned a lot of different important steps to take and points to pay attention to and the right strategy for a list of headings. And if you like that, definitely go and sign up for our premium course at aehelp.com and gltshelp.com. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access and you can use this code IDEA25 for a 25% uh, discount. So uh, thank you, Carolina, for moderating. Thank you, students, for watching. I will be back in about 20 minutes um, with uh, listening sections three and four from uh, continuing the listening test from last week. If you missed that, it's okay. Um, you can watch these independent. And um, hopefully I'll see you after 20 minutes. Stretch your legs, grab a glass of water, um, refresh yourself, come back and get ready to learn more English. I'm Adrian, I'm signing out momentarily from Victoria, but I will be back soon. Bye.